So you might already know that there is a kind of a built-in jumping off point in SharePoint lists and libraries to create a reminder flow. Uh, this is really useful for those situations where you have a list or a library where you've added a date. For example, in our presentations library here, we have a review date. So this is basically the date that the that these documents or these presentations need to be reviewed and updated by their owners. Now. The built-in, you know, we'll just do a quick walkthrough of the kind of the standard out-of-the-box uh, reminder flow, and then we will talk about how to repurpose it to make it a little bit more useful and a little more personal. So basically, to create that built-in reminder flow, we're going to click the three dots up here, go to the Automate menu, set a reminder, and this is going to pick up any date columns that you have added to the list or the library. So it doesn't work with the built-in. Uh, there are two date columns that are built into every list and library, one being created when the file or item was created, and one being modified when it was last modified. So you can't use those as part of this, so you do need to add your own date column uh, to a list or library. So I'm going to select Review Date. And once it catches up here, it's going to ask me, well, it's going to set, tell me which connectors it's going to use. So it'll use SharePoint notifications and Office 365 users. I'm OK with all those. Click Continue. And then I'm going to call this Demo Repurposing Minder Flows. And I'm going to say remind me in this many days in advance. Now, in the end, this is we're going to modify this so that it doesn't remind me, but it reminds the owner. But I'm just going to leave this set to one and click create. And the way these remind that reminder flow works is it creates a schedule flow, one that runs once a day, every day, and looks for any items where the review date is within the next 24 hours. Uh, so I'm not going to go through the entire uh, and dissect the entire flow, but we will take a quick look at it just to understand kind of the basics of what it's doing. So I'm going into Power Automate in my tenant here and going to My Flows and there is that demo repurposing reminder flows. All right, so if we open that up we can say that it ran, it succeeded. If I open that up, we can just, again, we're not going not gonna to go through every single piece of this, but I did want to just at least give you the highlights so you understand what this flow does. Uh, basically, it's going to run once a day. Now, with these recurrence flows, you can also run them manually, and when you use this kind of shortcut to create this flow, it you know, just to, so that you know what will happen when it runs, it runs immediately. But then from that point on, it'll just run once a day at the given schedule. So in this case, it sets it for 1500 hours Pacific Standard Time. So that's 3 p.m. Pacific West Coast U.S. time, uh, which you can modify in the in the in when you edit the flow. But we'll talk about that when we get there. But basically what this does creates a variable called table rows. This compose action just takes whatever you put in as the number of days to remind me in. That's all it is. And it gets my user profile in order to send me a message. But I, I, this to me really is kind of a nice to have but not really required but I'm going to leave it there anyway. And then within this scope and if you not don't use scopes in Power Automate you really should look into it. it helps keep things keeps your flows looking a little nicer, a little easier to, to, to navigate and to, to work on. But basically within that scope, it's basically taking today plus the number of days. So saying today's date is 11-1-2022. So it's adding one day to that, giving me 11-2-2022. And then X days plus one. So it's getting me the day after tomorrow. So basically this gets me tomorrow and then this action gets me the next day. Then this get list name by HTTP request. This is useful because it'll get lists or libraries. It's at sending an HTTP request to SharePoint to get uh, the name of the list that this flow is running against. Um, 
So it's nice because it'll work with whether this is a list or a library, doesn't matter. Uh, and then getting items. Now, get items, technically, if you go to create a, you know, use this action in your flow, it will allow you to get items from a list, but not so much from a library. In other words, you can use it to get items from a library. You just need to know that you need to use the the list name. This is the, the GUID of the list um, in there. And because document libraries, shocker, are actually just lists, but the items in them are documents. That's about it. Anyway, so this is going to get items, and it's using a filter query to say, return things where the review date is greater than or equal to tomorrow and less than or equal to the day after tomorrow. So basically get anything where that review date is tomorrow. So, and it does this greater than or equal to less than basically to account for um, date columns that might also include time because if it's, you know, within if, if there's a time component to that date field, then you want to make sure that you're accommodating that in this get items filter, this OData filter. All right, so it's returning the items. And then basically, if I look at the output of that, uh, if I show the raw outputs, you can see that it's returning some, it's returning basically a couple of things there based on the, that filter. So it's returning the two documents where the review date is 11.2. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Let's, uh, so that's what's returning. So then basically from that point on, uh, I know that it's getting those things from the list. And then this condition is basically saying if that, if, if get items returns nothing. So when we look at the edit view of this, we'll see that the, the formula it's using is if the output of that is empty, then do nothing. So if the output's empty, nada. If the output is not empty, then it's going to do this apply to each to basically add data about those files into that string variable that we that it uh, initiated way back at the beginning. All right, so that's, that's what this does. Um, by default. So what we're going to do is, you know, edit this because I don't want a reminder, but I want to send an email to the person, to the owner of that file, if that file exists. So how do we do that? Uh, basically, I click edit up here. And most of the flow here is built for me, so I don't really need to change a whole lot. But I do need to be just be cognizant of what I'm doing because I need to know I kind of went through the, the summary of how this is built, what the, each of these steps does, just so you'll know where you can poke and where you can change and where you really shouldn't. Um, so if I don't specifically tell you to modify something, then you probably shouldn't because it might not do what you want it to do when all is said and done. So I'm leveraging what's already here, this condition. If I expand the condition saying, you know, if uh, the body of get items value is empty, do nothing, great. So this is only going to, uh, you know, this apply to each is running on that body. So the list of items that's returned by this get items action. And here, what it's doing is appending that to a string variable. Uh, actually, the first thing I want to do is get rid of this send me a reminder email because I don't need that. I'm just going to delete that. And we can't repurpose that because the one thing to know about that notification connector is it only sends the email to the person who, whose connection is used in that flow. So I can't use that to send an email to somebody else. So it's really of no use to us here. Uh, now I could leave this append a string variable if I want. I'm not going to because I don't really need it. I'm just going to delete that. But I'm going to keep this applied to each because I still want to perform an action for each one of those files. And what, what's that action that I want to use? I want to send an email. So in this apply to each, I'm going to click add an action and send email. And you could use pretty much any of the send email actions you want to use. I'm going to use the standard old, the good old send an email V2 from the Office 365 Outlook connector. 
one thing to be aware of and is that this will send you know this flow is running as you unless you change the connections it's running with your connection so the, the email message that's being sent is going to send from you now that might not be what you want you might want to send it uh, from the SharePoint site there is a way to do that using an HTTP request I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole today just know that you can uh, and you would have to just modify your your flow here to use that action instead of the send an email but I'm going to select send an email v2 just for simplicity sake here now who do I want to send this to now because this is already retrieving it's basically running whatever steps inside here for each one of those values or each one of those list items or documents that's returned and each one of those has an owner so all I need to do if I want to send this email to the owner is go into add dynamic content that's really annoying and I am going to search for owner email it's very important to select owner email not any of the other owners not just owner owner email because owner the one that just says owner is an object not an email address claims is something else display name is something else but email is what you want so I'll select owner email and then in here we'll search for file name with extension is due for review and then in here We'll say, please review it and update as needed. And then we'll give them a link just to be helpful. So down here, I'm going to say link and select link to item. And that's that. That's all I need to do. I'm going to hit save oh actually before we actually run this again I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about this recurrence trigger and how we can modify this because it is one of my constant points of, of annoyance with Microsoft is that uh, thing little things like this like it defaults to the Pacific time zone why because that's where Microsoft is so I always make sure to go in here and set this to wherever your whatever your local time is so I'm in uh, the eastern US so I'm just like the UTC minus 5 Eastern time and then at these hours it's going to define what hour you want that email to fire at or what time you want this flow to run um, and it is 24 hour time so you do need to be you know just understand that and I like any of these kind of daily schedule things I know it's you know kind of it's always busy somewhere but I like to schedule them to run at what I consider to be off hours so you know 4 a.m. 5 a.m. 6 a.m. I'll set this to 6 a.m. Um, and one other thing to be aware of is well you can have it run multiple times a day if you'd like but once a day is probably sufficient and you can also specify minutes uh, in my experience these schedule flows do not always fire precisely at the time that you set them for so I really never bother setting specific minutes because it probably wouldn't be precise anyway uh, but typically most of my schedule flows initiate within say two to eight minutes of when they're supposed to so sometimes sometimes it's right when they're supposed to but I've seen delays of up to eight even on one or two occasions maybe ten minutes not that I pay a lot of attention just know that it is not um, if you need something to fire at a very specific point in time this might not be the way to do it just because there are variances anyway so that's all I'm going to do there hit save and then I will just go back to our flow details page here and one of the other nice things about recurrence flows is that even though I could wait until tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. whatever set this for to run or I can just click run and that will just force it to run now so I'll say run flow and I click done and now I need to go to one of the because 
I go to my Outlook mailbox, we'll see that initial notification, the reminder. So this is the, the email that was sent when I first created that. So I know that part one and part three of the those PowerPoints are due for review. But because I'm not the owner of any of those, I didn't get the flow that I just ran. So I'm just going to open up another user profile here where I have one of the per people who is an owner of a document. So I'll go to Robert Hogan's Outlook and go to there. And hey, there it is. So there's the email. Um, it's from Chad Keeley because that's who that's the account under which I created the flow to Robert Hogan. Please review and update. Now the link, uh, it didn't format that as a link, which is kind of annoying. Um, I guess I probably should have thought of that and, and put that into the email. You know what, since we have a couple minutes left on my normal video clock, let's do that. So let's try that again. I'm just going to edit my flow. And wait for it. So now the basically the, the problem is that it's not automatically formatting that link, even though I said link to item, it's not using that. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go into code view here because one of the, uh, this is actually another point of annoyance for me is that when you go to, if I were to type in the word link here, and then highlight that and click link. I can't put dynamic content in here. Someday I, I'm sure we will be able to, but right now we can't. So what we need to do is get a little creative here with some HTML. You do need to format it, know how to format an HTML um, hyperlink. Nothing too exciting. If you've taken any web design courses, it's probably going to be pretty simple for you. If not, here you go. I'll show you the quick, quick, quick version. So this is going to be uh, an opening, you know, less than, I guess that is. Uh, a href equals quote. And then we need the URL, which is link to item. We need a closing quote on that closing uh, was that greater than and then the word actually you know what instead of just putting the word link I'm going to put the file name here file name with extension there we go and then to make that a hyperlink I need another closing tag for the a uh, or anchor tag I guess is the formal name of that all right so we'll hit save There you go, You're getting a free miniature lesson in HTML. And let's run this flow again. Run that flow. And if I jump over to Robert's mailbox, we will see there is the please review and update as needed and there is a link beautifully formatted as a link that I click that and it takes me right to that PowerPoint so I can do what I need to do. So there you go. That is basically how you can take that built in reminder flow. Um, and assuming your library has a column for a person leverage that person column to say send an email to that person when that thing is due or needs review or whatever the column is for but there you go hopefully this was useful to you if so i appreciate a like and subscribe and all that good stuff um, if you have any questions uh, anything i glossed over um, feel free to throw that in the comments below thanks and have a great day